On this night, we celebrate the first Eucharist, the last supper, the new Passover. In the great tradition, this day is called Maundy Thursday. Maundy being the word for commandment. It is on this night at the table that Jesus and all 12 of the disciples, including the one who would betray him, Judas Iscariot. Uh, they were seated at the table and Jesus began to take off his outer robe and uh, take the towel that he had wrapped around himself and he washed the disciples' feet and wiped them with the towel that had been wrapped around his waist. Now that's love. And isn't it interesting when uh, a man and a woman are in a romantic relationship and the man, as we tend to do, uh, becomes a little hard-headed or maybe we're not listening as well as we should and the woman will say something to the effect of, if you loved me, you would do thus and so, right? Jesus himself even made the statement, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. You'll do what I tell you to do. We learn from 1 Corinthians chapter 13 uh, from the apostle Paul that love is an action word. It's more than a feeling, warm and fuzzies. Love is an action word. And so on this Maundy Thursday, we, we, we re-enter that holy night and we see the love of God in the person of Jesus Christ in action. Jesus shows his love for the disciples by getting down on his fully human and fully divine knees and he washes the disciples feet take a moment to think about that this is the same god the second person of the trinity who created time and space and every creature angelic and human and animal that dwells therein this is the same god who formed man from the dust of the earth breathed life into him by his holy spirit and the man and the woman became living souls. This is the same God who created the heavens and the earth and the sea and the moon and the sun and the stars and everything therein. And it, <laughs> this is the very same God who got down on his hands and knees and washed the disciples feet that's love and if you're not careful you will miss 
something very telling that Jesus shows us about the love of God the Father, as well as the love that he himself had for the disciples, and by extension, the love that Christ, that God the Father and Christ the Son have for all of us. You can make the mistake that, oh, Jesus only washed the disciples' feet because they were disciples or because they were his uh, right-hand men, if you would, uh, if you will. You, you might think that Jesus only washed their feet because they were followers and they were good little soldiers and, oh, he only washed their feet because they were, it, it, it may be in uh, 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 urban vernacular, we might say they were his homeboys. And so Jesus, of course, he was willing to be humble and debase himself and wash their feet. Oh, but you would be very wrong. Because if we look back at our gospel reading tonight, at John chapter 13, beginning at the first verse, it reads, Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Y'all, that's a real nice way of saying that Jesus knew it was just about time for him to die on the cross of Calvary. Verse, the latter part of uh, verse 13 goes on to say this, of Jesus Christ. It says, having loved his own, who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Jesus loved them to the end. Now, it would be real easy to look at that verse and say, well, Dr. Parker, it's clear that Jesus only had this kind of self-sacrificing, self-debasing kind of love because the disciples were his it says it right there in the text having loved his own right right but i submit to you that again you would be wrong How, why do i say this because the very next verse john the evangelist the the, the writer of this gospel he says this in verse 2 the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Iscariot, to betray him. Now, why, why would John the Evangelist do that? Why would he immediately after informing the reader that Jesus Christ loved these men to the end, the very next verse, John says that the devil had possessed Judas so that one of Jesus' own disciples, one of his closest friends, would betray him. What is John saying? John is saying that not only did Jesus love the 11 disciples, who, by the way, they don't get off the hook. If you know your Bible, you know that as time goes on, all the disciples, except for the women, y'all, all of the disciples, the, all of the men who call themselves men of God, scattered. They were terrified. Jesus had been arrested. They felt that they were going to be next. And so all the disciples fled. And it was the women, it was Mary and Martha and the mother of Jesus. They were the ones who were at the cross when Jesus died. They were the ones who discovered that Jesus had rose from the dead. They were the ones who ran and told the Easter story to 
these 11 men who <laughs> ultimately fled the scene. So the, uh, the 11 disciples who didn't betray Jesus with a kiss, they, they, they don't get off the hook. But, but, but here I, I make the point that John the evangelist is writing here and he says that Jesus loved them to the end. Not only did Jesus love the 11 disciples who did not betray him with the kiss, but John is making it clear that Jesus also loved even the demon-possessed betrayer, Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. Now, why am I harping on this? Because not only is love an action word, but true agape love, true Love that not only comes from God, but the love that is of God. It's not just love that we extend to family and friends or even only our sisters and brothers in Christ. The kind of love that Jesus calls for is not only the love of the brethren, and not only the love of your family and your friends, but Christ calls us to love even our enemies. And as always, Jesus set the example. He never asked anything of us before first setting the example for us. And so we find that Jesus loved them to the end. Not only the 11, but also the one who betrayed him. In theology, we call it enemy love. It is one of the things that makes our Christian faith so potent and so unique that we not only teach our adherents to love those who might be considered already lovable but our, but our Christian faith explicitly calls and demands and mandates that we love our enemy why the, the New Testament tells us because at one time we were the enemies of God we were contrary to his laws and his commandments and so once again Jesus never ask anything of us without first setting the example for us and as I close I want to encourage your hearts that um, if you recall our Old Testament reading from the book of Exodus it gets pretty um, detailed in what God asked Israel to do. The Jews had very extensive and specific and detailed and minute, and uh, I could go on, but just I dare you to read the book of Leviticus, and you will see that the laws and the commandments of God were so many and so at one point you all know the story God speaks to Moses and gives him 10 commandments now all of the the Levitical law ultimately flowed from these 10 commandments but 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 uh once you you, you you can look at the book of Leviticus and, and all the various laws and customs that God gave to the Hebrew people, and, 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 and initially you can condense those, uh, condense is not the right word, but you can uh, 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 see, the, the, see the seed form of all those commandments in the 10 
commandments. Now then you go on to the New Testament and the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the priests and the Levites, they challenge Jesus and they ask him, what is the greatest commandment? And of course they were expecting Jesus to pull from the hat, if you will, of the Ten Commandments. And essentially Jesus says no. Those Ten Commandments can actually be condensed into two commandments. And so we often call them uh, the Great Commandments. And those Great Commandments distilled down from the Ten Commandments are to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And what's the second one? To love your neighbor as yourself. But on this Maundy Thursday, seated at the table of 11 men who would ultimately abandon him, and one man who would very soon betray him, Jesus issues not the Ten Commandments, and not the two great commandments, but one new commandment. Verse uh, J uh, John chapter 13, as we are reading, verse 34, this is what Jesus has to say. I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. Now, Jesus goes on to speak specifically about love amongst Christian disciples. In fact, he says that, by, uh, verse 35, by this, by what? By disciples loving other disciples. By Christians loving other Christians, uh, Jesus says, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. But back up. This new commandment is, is, is bigger than Disciple love, this new commandment calls back to enemy love. It calls back, uh, John the evangelist is calling back to the, how the chapter begins. Again, we have Jesus is seated with 11 men who will ultimately abandon him. Now they'll come back. We all know that the apostles uh, the disciples did eventually uh, get it right, and they became the apostles and the, the pillars of the church. But, 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 but Jesus is currently, if you will, just, just again, we, we, we are being transported into the moment. Allow the Holy Spirit to, to bring us into that moment. Jesus is seated at the table with 11 men who will shortly uh, abandon him one man who will soon betray him and tonight we too we are seated at the table of the lord we are seated at the first eucharist we are seated at the last supper and jesus says to us all those who will abandon him those who will betray them him those who will fall into sin those of us who uh, have our fears and our doubts those of us whom fail God again and again in the big things and in the small things those of us who have not loved God with our whole heart and we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves Jesus says to us that we are to love one another just as I, just as Jesus has loved you, just as Jesus has loved me, just as Jesus has loved us. And so, on this Monday Thursday, 
or if you're listening to this on Friday, you can know that regardless whether you are the one who abandons Jesus, whether you are the one who betrays Jesus, or whether you are like the women at the cross and at the grave who have never left Jesus' side. You Maybe you grew up a Christian and uh, you all, the, all that you have ever known is Jesus Christ and the church. Regardless, whatever your station in life, whatever your current spiritual um, status, if you will, you can know that according to John chapter 13, that by God the Father, Christ the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, our one triune God, you are loved to the end. Amen.